but I know that our colleague, Mr. Thompson from Pennsylvania, is going to be sharing some great insights with us about the budget and, uh, again, other activities that we're doing. He has just joined the Congress in this session, but he's already making a great name for himself in terms of presenting items on the floor and doing hard work as a member of Congress. So I yield the floor to Mr. Thompson from Pennsylvania. Uh, I thank the general lady for, uh, for yielding some time here. Obviously today with serious concerns about the president's budget, a budget that, that borrows too much, spends too much, and taxes just way too much. You know, prior to my running for Congress this past year, I, I spent 28 years in the healthcare business. And one of the first things you learn in the medical profession is do no harm. So, Madam Speaker, I come to the floor today to speak briefly about the harm the President's budget will cause back in rural Pennsylvania. My rural district is much like the heartland of this country. Mom and pop shops, family farms, small businesses, just run-of-the-mill folks looking for a fair shake. So in evaluating the President's budget, I ask myself one question. Will this proposal help or hamper the economic growth in my district? And truth be told, it didn't take long for me to answer this simple question. Increasing taxes on small businesses, as this budget proposes, will penalize the very segment of the economy that is best equipped to get us back on track. Small businesses are creating seven out of every 10 jobs. They are the backbone of rural America. They are the farmers that harvest much of the food that we eat. They are the small, independently owned energy companies whose employees go to work each day with the goal of achieving American energy independence. They are the independent truckers that haul the goods that we consume. You see, Madam Speaker, these are not Republican or Democrat jobs, but they're jobs that are at the risk of being eliminated if this budget proceeds as currently written. The President's new cap and tax energy policy, which will inevitably drive up the cost of every manufactured and processed good, will increase utility bills and will cost more just to fuel up at the tank will devastate rural America. Madam Speaker, oil was discovered in my district 150 years ago. We are also home to the most promising natural gas play in the country and the third largest in the world. Many of my constituents make a living by harvesting the natural resources that we are blessed with. These same natural resources, I may add, that are used to build windmills, solar panels, and biorefineries. You see, without natural gas and oil, there'd be no windmills or solar panels. These very natural resources are the key feedstock in manufacturing the next generation of clean energy sources. So we should celebrate the American energy industry, the fuels that made this country what it is today, the fuels that will serve as a bridge to the renewable energy future, not penalize it as if this budget and the president proposes. All is not lost, however. The speaker will have an opportunity to allow fruitful debate and deliberation next week when the budget comes to the floor. House Republicans will put forward a budget proposal that offers smart government solutions and address the very issues I've laid out. The American people are hurting. The economy is on life support. And if the Democratic leadership asks themselves this simple one question, what will this budget, will this budget help or hamper economic growth? They'll come to the table and work with Republicans to find a reasonable compromise for the good of the entire country. Nope. I certainly will. Jay, Madam Speaker, the gentleman from Pennsylvania yielding to, yielding to me because I had uh, uh, some interesting statistics that follows right in what, with what uh, Representative Thompson was talking about in regard to those small businesses in his district. Uh, I think he described his district very much like mine in northwest Georgia. But just before we started this hour that with Ms. Fox controlling the time on discussing this budget, uh, I had met with uh, a, a good friend from the American Chemistry Council. Uh, and we sat down, he talked to me about this budget, the $3.6 trillion budget that uh, borrows too much, it spends too much, it taxes too much. And he said, Phil, let me just tell you what this does to jobs uh, that are uh, businesses that are part of the American Chemistry Council membership. But in your district, the 11th of Georgia, Phil, we're talking about 1,500 direct jobs and 95,000 indirect. 
employees of the chemical industry in the 11th district. And he was talking about the same thing Representative Thompson was talking about in regard to that energy tax, that hidden energy tax. And, and this business in chemicals and plastics, they're very energy dependent. Uh, and then and, and on top of all of that, uh, that this cap and tax where uh, the president is trying to get $600 billion to spend on education and uh, uh, a single-payer health care system and green energy. Uh, it, it's really hurting these small businesses uh, that depend on electricity. Uh, and there's a super fund tax of $2.8 billion over 10 years. They do a lot of things with accounting that hurt small businesses. But I just wanted to, because it's so important, it goes right along with what's going on in western Pennsylvania. I appreciate the gentleman for yielding, and I'll yield back to him at this point. Well, I thank the gentleman for his remarks, and the fact is, our sounds like our districts are very similar, and and they're hurting right now. And we need we need leadership, leadership with a vision for smart government solutions, and that's not what I'm seeing with this proposal coming forward next week from the from the president. And with that, I thank the gentle lady, and yield back my time. Well, I thank the gentleman from Pennsylvania for coming and sharing his perspective, as he indicated. Uh, we all represent small businesses. We all represent people who are struggling in this country. Uh, middle class families and small businesses are making tremendous sacrifices when it comes to their own budgets. They're learning to live within their budgets, but Washington continues to spend trillions in taxpayer dollars on bailouts and other government programs. We have people up here who are so uh, uh, out of touch with the American people. Some of them never go home. Some of them have been in Washington 50 years. Uh, a vast majority of the, of the majority party has been here for a long, long time. Many of them had parents who served in Congress. They really are out of touch with the average American. And I think it's extraordinarily unfortunate. 